With MJ, it's just like, look at that. There are kids that get in and they just have it. They just do it. MJ was eight years old and he was swimming against guys 14 years old, you know, and uh, that was fantastic for us, you know. He's a strong young man. And just to see him evolve and to find something A, he really likes, and that B, he excels at, there's moments, you know, I'm really a proud mom. I'm like, that's my son, you know, challenges or not, it's a great feeling. To find out that there is something seriously wrong is, is devastating. <laughs> thing that bothered me most when they talk about them stopping their heart and then having to start it back. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was tough. That was tough. People think that cancer is the number one challenge and killer of children. It's not, it's hearts. So every minute somebody's faced with these decisions and these challenges. You know, one thing that I will say to them is, you be strong, you believe, and be determined to win. MJ Ward's life started in idyllic fashion with a couple of parents that saw him as their own little miracle. Oh, it was exciting. We found out we were having MJ because we've been trying for a while. Not successfully at first, but finally we were pregnant and we were excited about it, so it was just good news. We lost our first child. So after we lost our first child, finding out that she was pregnant again with this child, we were really excited. It was um, glorious. It was an exciting time for the wards. Then, they got the news that would change things forever. I went in for a test because I was an older mom. Um, what is it, amniocentesis, I think it's called. And they were like, you know, we're going to do a different test also. We started wondering what was going on. Something was seriously wrong. Uh, there was multiple anomalies with MJ's heart. MJ has a syndrome, which it would just call it heterotaxy syndrome. It is a very complex group of defects, and it's a very difficult uh, problem to treat. MJ's organs were all reversed, meaning that his stomach and his liver were all on the opposite sides of his body. So his stomach, instead of being on the left, was on the right. Um, his liver was in the midline. And his heart, instead of being in the left chest, was in his right chest. And um, in addition to that, there was you know, numerous anomalies uh, or defects wrong with the heart itself, but everything was reversed. Why me? You know, why us? Um, what did we do wrong? Um, was there something wrong we had done along the way? Um, you know, but then it, it turned to, okay, we're excited, we want a child, we'll deal with this. Um, but it really was kind of at first, a little bit of sadness, of course. It was sort of like devastating to us, but I know God knows best and so that, that we were happy. It seems like almost unfair for a newborn baby to, you know, be brought into this world and be faced with, um, you know, all these, uh, you know, different hospitalizations and, 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 and painful procedures. It's like anyone who finds out that things aren't, quote, normal. <laughs> but at the same time, because of their relationship, because of their ability to, because of their ability to communicate with one another, they were able to channel both of their emotional strengths that they have as individuals and collectively become better. Me and my wife uh, really decided early on that uh, whatever happened is going to happen but we're gonna make it work. They never looked upon it as something that wasn't unsurmountable. There was never any disbelief that uh, this baby would have every opportunity to survive and to thrive. We, we relied on our faith. Uh, we know God will work it out. Yes. And we know he's gonna have an operation shortly after he was born. 
And we know that was going to be a follow-up operation. Of course, they were disappointed. They were sad. But I think they took it rather well. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't think they uh, were in any, any type of denial, as some families are. I, I think they were surprised. Um, they were, um, I remember Mr. Ward especially was very disappointed that his son would not be able to play competitive sports because I know, you know, he has a football, you know, football background and I recall that he was, uh, it, 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 it was somewhat in an amusing way, but, uh, you know, kids with MJ's type of problem are not able to play on a competitive type of team sports because they don't have the endurance to keep up with the other members of the team. The unique thing about the pregnancy is that they knew before the delivery of their child that their child was going to have a challenge. And what they did is they were able to gather the resources that would allow them to provide the best opportunity for that child to do well. The one thing I was really um, adamant about was I want to know everything so that we knew what we were facing so we could prepare accordingly. Dr. Carlos and Dr. Ko told us our options. They said uh, three things, one of three things would occur. One, he'd be immediately be taken from me. I was at Medical City. He'd go to Children's Hospital. Mitchell would go with the baby. He'd have instant surgery because he could possibly have need three surgeries. Um, second scenario, he'd need a heart transplant. Um, or he's okay. You know, he can forego the first one. There may be some challenges. Um, you know, other things might come with it, but we'll see. So when he was born, of course, um, Mitchell, of course, was happy as could be. I was happy as could be. They whisked him away, and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, someone give me feedback, because no one came back to the room to tell me anything. I remember that. I'm like, what about me? When, when he first was born, he was, a, he, was a, he was there for a while. And they had tubes and things, you know, and he had, he had something in his head. Uh, what he put in there, I guess, for the for the breathing and the other thing. We was we were concerned, but uh, we still was hoping for the best. The best for MJ meant a couple of major internal surgeries. The first at just six months of age, surgery that included work on his heart, a heart that was the size of a strawberry thing that bothered me most when they talk about them stopping their heart and then having to start it back. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was tough. That was tough. When we saw him after surgery, when he came in, when he had the first open heart surgery, he had tubes like in all parts of his body. And uh, we were concerned Wherever your mind takes you, you're in that place. I mean, I, it's hard for me to describe, but you go to a place and you just, you just wait there, you know, until, and you believe. I mean, I think we believed everything was going to be okay. When the second operation, we was concerned about his older. And but, uh, when he's, as he's walking down with the doctors, he looked back at us and said, uh, I'll be back. And that was encouragement for us and for him also, you know. To just turn around yeah. as they was going into surgery, MJ said, I'll be back. <laughs> My goodness, yeah, and that was fantastic, that uplifted us. It was God speaking, because I was so stressed on that one. I was just like, I, I don't know if I can make it through these eight hours or whatever it's gonna be. Yeah, I think everybody um, lost it, because he just said it, yeah. you know, just like he knew. Like a little what grown was, up. Like what was going <laughs> on, so what clear. was happening. He knew that that's what his mom needed to hear, that's what I needed to hear, that's what mm -hmm. everybody needed to hear, and, mm -hmm. and he just told the nurse, wait, wait, and he and turned mommy, around mommy, and said, mommy, I'll, I'll be right back. Said, I'll be right back. I think a lot of the strength you show as a parent is to comfort your child too. But at times, like you said, he did comfort us too. So it kind of switched roles accordingly. He was in the room and I was in there with my sister, Lisa, and all of a sudden his heart started racing and they were trying to slow it back down. Um, you know, I'm sitting there trying to coax him. It's okay, I'm not sure what's going on, MJ, it's okay. You know, he wasn't really panicked. He's just looking at all these people going around them. Yep. And, you know, they're all doing their jobs. And of course, I'm the parent. I suppose I turn on the, what's going on? What are you doing? What's happening? And they're like, we got it, we got it. And one lady pulls it, just let them finish. It'll be over in a second. And we get there and my sister walks out and she's crying. Yep. And she goes, I don't know how you do this. They told us it was gonna be a lot longer in the hospital than it actually was. And I do believe Dr. Lord said it was, a, it was a miraculous type recovery because he bounced back so quickly. Right. We were in and out probably in, 
you know, th uh, now I won't say half the time they said, but it was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. This syndrome, this particular type of syndrome is still very, very difficult to manage. Um, diagnose and treat and, and, and the mortality rate, uh, you know, in this day of age, it's, it's still quite high. But uh, it's amazing that MJ made it through and, and, and where he is now. And one of the things with him is his body just acclimated to his anatomy. He was formed in MJ's form and it works for MJ. You dropped like two seconds in that swim. You had a good flip turn. You had a good start. You did a good job. Good job to Ahmad. What you got to do, you got to turn your focus now to the breaststroke. The new MJ has traded his hospital time for pool time. Reach. Little MJ has become a giant in the pool. Go MJ, go! I had no expectations for this child. And when he got in and swam backstroke the first time, I thought, man, that's pretty good. And then we put a watch to him and, man, that's real good. And he still holds the six and under record for the YMCA, for the state meet, we call it Lone Star. There are kids that get in and they just have it. They just do it. With MJ, it's just like, look at that. He's a natural. He is a total natural. And just to see him evolve and to find something A, he really likes and that B, he excels at. There's moments, you know, I'm really a proud mom. I'm like, that's my son, you know, challenges or not, it's a great feeling. Those challenges seem like a distant memory from the water. MJ has developed into one of the best young swimmers in America, and his races at this state meet in Frisco quickly turned into swims for second. Good job. Hey, eight events, seven gold medals, one silver. Good job. And we got two more tomorrow. All right? Good job, MJ. Good job, MJ. I've told him we're going to have to set different goals for you than we set for other swimmers your age. We set goals for you. Let's break this record. What's the meet record on that? Let's see where you are and let's see what it would take to break the meet record. MD was eight years old and he was swimming against guys 14 years old, you know, and uh, that was fantastic for us, you know. He's a strong young man. You're swimming against a 13 and 14 year old, okay? You're eight, but guess what? Whatever. The pool doesn't get any longer or any shorter because of their age. It's all about you being technically sound and swimming as fast as you can. I was just like, man, he can't swim with those kids. I mean, what? He's kid 13, 14. And then man. he calls me, I'm like, why are they doing to my baby? Yeah, my wife was like, what yeah. do you mean he's doing yeah. that? I don't think so. He didn't and know. to watch how he performed with, with, with uh, all those lanes and those big kids and to put them to be the lead, the lead. Come on, MJ! And to come in second, to put him in a good position to win, it was just, I think people just went nuts. I mean, these kids are 13, 14, he's eight. He's quite a gift. He's quite a, he's quite precocious and, and to have that talent and, and he's all exuberant, life's great every day and he's always doing something um, that he's enjoying, something fun for him. And that makes it fun for everyone around him. My favorite practice days, don't tell MJ this, are the days he comes to practice. He drives himself when he swims. He really, really does. He just goes into his own zone, I think, he, sometimes. He gets in a zone. And I mean. he really just wants to do well. We didn't come after one gold medal. We come after them all. That's what makes Phelps who he is. That's what makes Aaron Pearsall who he is. They don't go to get just one gold medal. They go to get them all. You got to be competitively greedy. Competitively greedy, son. All right? Good job. That competitive greed led to nine state titles in Frisco. It also makes MJ a mainstay at the top of the USA swimming rankings. He's a rising star in the pool. But more than anything else, he's just a kid that likes to swim. He's aware of it. I think in a way, though, since he's still eight, it's all fun, but he does have that competitive edge, which is good in all that he does. He likes to come out on top and completely understand what's going on. Um, he's just really focused. I've never had another kid where I sat down with him and said, let's look at all your events and see how many meet records you can break. I've, I've got kids, you know, your breaststroke is really good. Let's look at your breaststroke records and see what you can do there. No, this is every, let's just look at everything. <laughs> he's good, he's liking it, he's eight. 
let's have fun with it, you know, and I'm just proud of him. So I can say I'm always proud when he's swimming, you know, always proud when he, after he you know, gets out the water, talks to his coach and he comes over, mommy, where's my game? You know, he, you know, he becomes that little kid, he's a little athlete out there going and doing his best. And I always tell him, you know what, did you do your best? That's what it's all about. Do your best each time. That's all I ask for. If you don't win, that is fine by me, but just do your best. He does his best all while dealing with things that are beyond the comprehension of most eight-year-olds. No one has said he's all clear. It's always the potential for another one to fix this or anything else that may go awry. Um, second of all, they say, MJ, you can't swim anymore. You know, that would break his heart, break my heart, you know, so there's, that's still out there. You know, again, you put that aside, you put it in a little place, keep it safe, and you just hope for the best and pray for the best. And, you know, you it take that, you're just that much proud, more proud in the moment, saying, let's enjoy it. We did not actually correct his heart, but we do what, what is called a palliative type of surgery, which means that we, you know, we re reroute his blood flow so that his heart is still pumping the blood to the lungs and to the, to the body. But it's still, it's not corrective. We didn't go in and correct it and make it into a normal heart. So his heart is still abnormal and still consists of the majority of the defects that he was actually born with. When he went to, uh, to camp at Texas A&M, he was there for a week, you know, and this, he's eight years old. And he's standing in a dorm by himself, you know. And you could give the medicine to uh, Texas A&M and have them administrate it. But me and my wife wanted him to do it. You need to know. This is you need to you need to do this. You don't need to have anybody giving it to you because this is going to be part of your life, potentially for the rest of your life. That responsibility makes MJ mature beyond his years, which is a big reason he thrives here. Lamplighter really does not push kids, but we use a, a constructivist model of educating children, which lends itself to students feeling compelled to work harder. MJ excels in this environment. Even if at a glance, he looks like just another kid on the playground. We would never know. He is out on the playground playing and interacting with everybody. He never speaks about having any limitations whatsoever. He is active in the classroom. I never see him. We have quite a few children that come in on a daily basis just for little stomach aches and little band-aids. MJ never comes in. He is too busy out there enjoying school and enjoying his little life. I think we talked about it a little bit when he was in first grade, especially being in PE. I like to know all those things because I need to pay uh, a little special attention to children that have may have special needs. I had no idea and it's never been an issue. I can't imagine it will be an issue in the last three years that he's been in my PE class, which is every other day. He does everything we do with great intensity and with enthusiasm and a smile on his face. And it's a, and the joy and freedom of being able to move and be a kid. MJ's a neat kid. He's got lots of energy. He's, he's a good athlete. He swims, I think, nearly every day. Uh, and he tells us a little bit about that. Uh, but he's just, he's vibrant. He's just full of life like a third grade boy should be. MJ is an incredibly bright boy but he's very typical of a boy. Uh, he's very athletic, very energetic, um, and his mind, I would say, is as quick often as his actions. He's loving, he's a great friend to other people. He likes to help. Um, very responsible, studious. Uh, he's, he's all boy, though, so he gets into stuff. He's mischievous at times, and, uh, but he's, he's a really, decent young man. I think children respond to him in a way um, that they recognize that he is confident um, and that he speaks with confidence. Um, so I think children naturally kind of gravitate toward him and listen to him. I'm proud of my wife and we're proud of us of making sure he's balanced. You know, I mean, we, we love that he can swim, but at the end of the day, swimming, we don't know how long it's gonna last. Being a student and strong academically is the most important thing in this household for all our children. But he's a balanced kid. I mean, he can play chess and he's competitive. You know, he's an intermediate chess player. He can go to school and do well academically and he can swim. And I think that's just, the proudness comes from 
for the program that me and my wife have put, it, put down for our children. It's working. It's working in ways the wards would not have been able to imagine just a few short years ago when their lives were more about hospital visits than honor rolls. He's a blessing. He really is. You I'm know, well, well pleased, I guess. Yeah, I am it. too. Uh huh. Very pleased with what's going on with him now. Yeah. I think Mitchell, even though he won't admit to it, I think he's just the ultra proud dad. I mean, MJ gets prizes that he shouldn't get. I mean, there's these extra, I think Mitchell goes above and beyond with him sometimes. You only have your kids for a very short period of time when you really think about it. Because there comes a time that they're gonna fly away from the nest and they're gonna start their own lives. So you, you, you really appreciate, you know, what he's been through and what he's going through, you know, as he, you know, continues to grow. Kids are so resilient and that was his normal. Um, so he didn't know any other way of starting out life. And, but there is a certain joy about him and, and, and you would think it might come from some of those struggles when he was young and it might just be who he is. He's really had a wonderful upbringing. His family, you know, has always been there for him and given him full support. And, uh, but yes, I am amazed to, to, in the last few years, MJ has taken up swimming and the number of medals that he's won and, and, and how, and all the things that he's accomplished just never ceases to amaze me. It's amazing when you look at the list of things that were um, part of his start of life. Um, and it is amazing. And it's amazing and, and you're grateful at the same time for the opportunity to have good medical care and the opportunity to get to know a family that has had to struggle through that and have come out on the other side. And uh, you're just grateful for life. What's even, uh, to me, neater about the story is that they chose to have some more babies. <laughs> you know, Sometimes when, you, when you're challenged, uh, you say, hey, this is all I can, this is all. But that just goes to show you that they really, truly had the perseverance and the strength and the courage to be able to say, hey, we can do this again. We both had a great set of parents. My parents, I mean, stepped it up. Her parents stepped it up. I mean, I mean, when the grandparents, I mean, both both sides and family, I mean, I mean, family held up. I'm sure in the deep of night, just the two of them, they, they worry and they're concerned. But as far as their son, they want him to be capable and strong and able to do whatever he wants to do. It's, it's wonderful inspiration for other families who, you know, don't feel like that this child, their child will ever amount to anything. And I think MJ is a perfect testimony to say, hey, you know, I, you know they can do this. They, they, they can, you know, win swim meets and, 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 and you know, and win medals and, 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 and do all these things. It's just amazing. Amazing, but not impossible because even during the darkest of times, the wards kept one thing in the front of their minds. You need to at some point make a choice that it will work out and you're gonna do everything you can, or you're gonna, you're gonna do everything you can to try to make it work out and that be your focus and to enjoy every moment with your child, you know, because again, I always say every moment with MJ's not given going forward. I mean, at any point, things could go awry. You hear in the news about kids dropping you know, in practice, having heart issues. Those are unknown typically, but it could happen at any time. But just enjoy your child. Um, but there's success stories out there. Try to be one of those success stories where things just work out. I will say this, every minute that the watch tickets, ticks on our watch, somebody's having this conversation with their doctor somewhere in the world. Somebody's getting the news that their child has a heart issue every minute. You know, one thing that I will say to him is, you be strong, you believe, and be determined to win.